Okay, so <laughs> uh, for those listening uh, to this podcast, this Bumbling Cinema Podcast, my name is Julius and I'm here with uh, Brian and Miles. We tried to do this on video with a whole lighting setup, a whole camera thing, but something's going on. So it was a first test drive. Uh, I'll incorporate the footage into the podcast for you guys to listen to. What's happening, everybody? My name is Julius, and I'm here once again for another podcast, but this is different because there are actual visuals. There's a whole lighting setup. A whole crew kind of is here, and we are here because it is a very special day. Not only is it the 4th of July, where we have to celebrate our patriotism and our uh, immediate downfall as a society, we have to talk about X month. This is the month of the mutants deadpool and wolverine is coming out later this year later this month and we are going to have a great time seeing it i think everyone in this room is going to see it the same day but we'll talk about that in a little bit but here we are doing a podcast celebrating the x-men franchise from the get-go from the very first time in 2000 24 years ago when we saw the mutants live action in action i am here with many people many great guests many look entranced right now and you'll see them in a second get ready to do the all right i am here (laughs) with mr (laughs) (laughs) i'm here with brian and miles right now and you'll see the other people in a little bit as we talk about the films but brian and miles how yes. are you? Are you good? Are you good? Can good. you guys can you guys speak up a little bit? Yes. Okay. Yes. And and Miles, why don't you tuck in with Brian a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Come up in here. Yeah, you're in frame. <laughs> it's a little scary right now. <laughs> oh, God. I love it. Oh, it looks juicy right now. Ooh, guys, oh God. hey, happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, Jules. How do you guys feel about the country right happy now? Happy America. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty funny. You can, uh, you, it, will, it, it might go up in flames, but... At least we're doing an X-Men podcast talking about minorities yes. in, in <laughs> society. <laughs> we, this is going to be a very political podcast. I'm surprised Sebastian is not here. To bring the political vibe, yeah. but he doesn't know shit about the X Men. No, nothing. No. Yeah, what does he know about comic books? He hates Batman. Yeah, he hates walking. Hates I mean, walking. I wouldn't, be- I wouldn't believe in anyone who hates walking. Well, it's like Santa Claus. <laughs> walking is equivalent to Santa well, he Claus. He sure does know a hell of a lot about comics. Or like That's Margaret right. Thatcher, you know. So, so guys, tell me. Um, your history with the X-Men as characters, as a team. Because there are comic books, there are films, there are the cartoons and everything. What What's your guys' history with it? Uh, I mean, it, it's been... It's a, what was the first thing I remember? I remember... I don't remember X1, like the movie X1 as much. I remember X2 a lot better mm-hmm. for some reason. But I just remember... It was Mystique. <laughs> I remember Mystique really well. I remember her. Yes. She was my first goth patty. <laughs> no, that's that's his. No, I I remember I remember uh, Hugh Jackman being the predominant guy about uh, you know being Wolverine and everything like that. Very classic. Um, we all like I already knew like did the, uh, did seeing Hugh Jackman in the first film shirtless awaken anything in you? Uh, not. Because it did for me. Hey, we have confirmation from Crystal <laughs> that yeah. it did. So we're going to take that as a primary source. <laughs> no. uh, I, also the video game. Uh, one of the, Which one? Uh, uh, X-Men Apocalypse. Yes. It was like... It was oh, like, the the Legends game, right? Legend, X-Men yeah, Legends. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Apoc- with, the with Apocalypse. With Apocalypse, yeah. Which is in the same world as the Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Mm-hmm. Oh, know? really? Yeah, yeah. It's the same I never world. knew that. Oh. It's the same developers and everything, wow. yeah. Dude, it was such an amazing game. That was one of the 
games that me and my dad and even my brother played together. Yeah. Just like as Wolverine, as Magneto, as yeah, freaking just as a bunch of different people, and it's just amazing. all those muties. You can oh, say the word. Muties. Those muties. Say the word. You're oh with my friends. God, yeah, no. Mutas. Brian, what what do you what about you? Well I was gonna say same thing. Actually that was the first experience I ever had with X Men. Yeah. That and like going to the swamp meet and getting like those Chiefy Chaffa like toys that were like super friends and they had Shrek Oh yeah, yeah. And Superman yeah. and like Christian Bale. <laughs> what is was it like those little figures where they're like the, the, the superheroes ones, are yeah, kids. Yeah. Like, they're, like, little miniature ones. They're ki- yes, children. Yes, But it's exactly. awkward to see with Wolverine. <laughs> like, this, <laughs> like, this old man, child version exactly. of it. Like, Superhero Squad, right? Well, yeah, exactly. Oh but, <laughs> I mean, I played the same x Men game on the Xbox with my uncle. So, when I would go over, we were either play that or King Kong Island, the King yeah. Kong game with yeah. uh, Percy Jackson. Which, what about Ki- Kingdom Hearts? You need a son. <laughs> Someone needs to shoot you. Uh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> With okay. love. <laughs> By the way, this is the first time I'm on camera, really, for the podcast. So the, right. they, well, they caught they caught my they caught your my, exact my fear in you saying that, and it, and they also caught you threatening that. But anyway, it's legal documentation. We are now seeing the beginnings of another stage of human evolution. The truth is that mutants are very real, and they are among us. We must know who they are, and above all, what they can do. But <laughs> what, what about the films and everything? Because you know, Miles brought up the the movies and stuff with Hugh Jackman, and and, and those are very oh, yeah. those were game changing films yeah, for no. the superhero genre and everything. You know, they they were the first time we're seeing a lot of those Marvel characters in a bigger context than just like a Saturday morning cartoon. So where, where were you guys with the first X Men film? Like, like, when was the first time you watched it? I mean, Brian, you're like 13, so it was probably really recent when you first watched it. Um, but Miles, how about you? <laughs> you're 14. 14, <laughs> of course. Um, I, I don't know why. I think I felt with the uh, first X Men film. You know, it's the start of everything. Yeah. Uh, I think it was John. Yes, John. 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 Uh, John Cena. John. What, no, John Cena. What are you talking about? Uh, Patrick Stewart. There you oh, go. D- yeah. Oh, Patrick. John, <laughs> John, John Stewart. John Leguizamo. <laughs> John Leguizamo. <laughs> that would be a really weird Pat- professor. <laughs> Sid from Ice Age. Patrick Stewart is just <laughs> fucking amazing Yeah, as that, as Professor X. That's that's the casting that for is, that character, yeah. right? Like, that's amazing casting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still, like, you get to see everybody. Yeah. You know, like the first time, and it's, like, very theatrical and everything mm-hmm. like that. But it seems like, again... With a lot of the, uh, it's like even though I loved it, the one thing is it's like it revolves around pretty much Wolverine the whole, almost yeah. like the whole time. Yeah, it's like because you know he's such a big character. And yeah, he, I, I still love the films and everything. It's like man, he's it, like Wolverine is basically a main like the. Yeah, the main person yeah. kind of through everything. Well, yeah, he's through his eyes almost. It, it is. It's like a, a good way to like discover the X Men through his eyes because he's he's someone of mystery, but he's going into this school where he's like, I don't know what what is this place, right? Like he's like all scared of it. it, it first a lab, <laughs> then he goes upstairs and there are children there and everything. He's like, what the fuck is this, right? But he's a really good point of um, point of reference because you, you, you you're discovering the mystery of. Yeah, the Xavier Mansion and who the X Men are, and, yeah, in him becoming an X Men. Yeah, well, was was Wolverine like for you guys your favorite character of the X Men growing up? Because he's he's a lot of people's because he's for a long time was the face of it of it all. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean Beast was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the practical effects on him. Oh yeah, that was really Those good. Those looked amazing. Yeah, yeah it dude, really it's just good. the way they made the, co- the 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 get up for him. It's just like, mm-hmm. yes, that is that looks the fucking thing looks great. That yeah. that is beast. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But that's not until like the third film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. we'll get there. Yeah, we'll yeah. get there Takes a while. We'll, to the goat, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. last stand. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for Wolverine, I feel yeah. like. Even with that question, Here, it, it's while you kind of... while you answer the question, I'm gonna open this pineapple juice <laughs> that that you gave me on brand. I hope you like it. Well, within that question, I feel like it's kind of hard not this to, like... This is shit. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Go for it. Hey, Go for drink. 
this. Uh, I feel like it's kind of hard not to like Wolverine because it's yeah. so pressure that this is more of a Wolverine film mm-hmm. trilogy than it is and like, I, like a, a, just a an X-Men X-Men X-Men. film. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like every, every, it, Wolverine's got to be your favorite. There is a war coming. You sure you're on the right side? That or Rogue? Rogue, mm-hmm. Wolverine, maybe even Storm in the first yeah, film. Storm, uh, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, <laughs> how weird, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like the first cast, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be like, oh, the first film was amazing because it really represented, because it did feel like an X-Men movie more than the other films. So I'm yeah. sure we'll talk about it a little later yeah. on, but it felt like the first film actually had a mission that the X-Men were trying to complete. A mission that like most people will always like assume with like the comics or with the shows because that's what it's about. It's yeah, about the X Men coming together to fix something and fix something for the greater world. Maybe you could argue that with the second film, but that's more like espionage. If anything, that film should have felt more like um, uh, X Force in a way. You know? Yeah. Well, well, I actually really I agree with that. Actually, that the first film, upon my rewatch recently, I, I ended up really liking it more because it is the team film. Exactly. You know, yeah. like they work as even like someone like Cyclops, who we know gets kind of the shaft in this series. Yeah. yeah. But he's he's God. at his, James no Marsden. No, no, for real, James asked. Marsden <laughs> is at his best in this film. I think. Oh no, yeah. You know, Maybe, like he yeah. feels like the character of the you know the, the leader. He's he's badass. He's not taking Wolverine's shit and everything. Like he's giving it right back to him exactly, when he's yeah. like messing with him. It's like don't t- don't and stay away from my girl. You know, and that yeah. chemistry gets instantly lost. Within yeah. The other <laughs> well, we'll get there. But so what? What aspect of this really? Because this movie, I think for us especially, it, a lot of it is filtered through like nostalgia and mm. everything. You know, and it's we we can't help that. It's just when it came out and everything. But mm. what part of it? you know it, in your memory of the film really encapsulates that like that that nice old feeling of the of the film you know for me it's got to be magneto yeah magneto was very he's pretty fucking evil yeah serene it's McKellen. Like, and it's like him having the guns pointed yeah. at everybody yeah. and then like Look, kind of like looking at which gun to fucking shoot. Yeah, and it's like yeah. he shoots it, and then he holds the fucking bullet right next to his fucking head. Yeah. And like it's tense. Ooh, it's tense. Yeah. They're like, oh shit, he could kill everybody yeah. right fucking now, but that yeah. wouldn't prove. You know, yeah, wouldn't prove everything. Well, it's it's the same as like with uh, Patrick Stewart as Xavier. It's perfect casting. Getting yeah. Serene McKellen as Magneto. Like you look at the comic books and everything. what happened? I fucking died. Your camera died. Yeah. Uh oh. We are here back to talk about the X Men films, uh, the franchise, as it were. And uh, we were talking about the first film, the first X Men movie. And uh, uh, we were talking just now about um, Magneto, right? Uh, Sir Ian McKellen is Magneto. So, what do you guys think it is that makes him such a compelling villain? I mean, I, I know what it is, but what do you guys think it is? The sheer brutality and like the way, the like mindset of how he, uh, Ian gets into being basically king, of, but not king, but like the ruler of Genosha and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. Just the mindset of like these guys are trying to kill us. We're gonna hit first before they do anything. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that idea of like I can kill everybody here if yeah. I wanted to. Yeah. But yeah. that won't prove my point. Yeah. Yet. Not <laughs> yet. <laughs> Not till they're all mutants. Right? Yes, mm. basically. Brian, as a history major. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. I, or I'm sorry, as a historian with Thank a, you. a Thank diploma. You. Thank you. Yes. Arguably. Um, <laughs> this right. character obviously is very historically relevant. Oh, yeah. Screams uh, a, dictator. A, a con- well, a, someone who was in the concentration camps during yeah. World War II and everything. Yeah. Um, now aspires to be like the people who put him into that situation during the Holocaust. What do you think of Magneto as an antagonist for the X-Men in this film? It looks amazing. Yeah. If, if you wanted, for people, I mean, I'm shocked for people who haven't seen these movies yet. Yeah. Um, but you haven't seen these movies, but you do watch The Boys. I would say the closest representation of Magneto, or at least his rise to power and popularity, is maybe Homelander. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is... 
the understanding of that he understands the downtrodden and the downtrodden would be the mutants it's people who have powers people who could be seen almost as gods and we see that within later x-men films yeah but we see in this primary example that rogue feels like almost like i can't be loved i can't be touched and we see that even with xavier with his powers like i wish to be normal in a way you yeah know? and that that becomes a bigger plot within the third x-men film but Magneto sees this as a crime against their kind because he knows that what we've been given are gifts of the supernatural, something that's even higher than just no any normal human. And for any human to put us down is wrong, yeah. you know? We are the second evolutionary chain of humanity. We are be above humanity. It's kind of the same thing with Homelander where he views yeah. himself as we're of gods among men. It's, well, especially in this latest season. Oh, yeah. You know, you see it, it's going in that exact direction. It is. Except yeah. Homelander is more... Psychotic. Psychotic. More, a little more psychotic. More narcissistic. He definitely more, like, <laughs> more, uh, he wants just followers for the sake of following him, kind of thing. I mean, that's more... He's more corporate... Homelander's more corporate with... And, you know... Yeah. Trying to make... Uh, have everyone love him. Magneto's just there to fucking... Just... just yeah. take care of his own oh, kind yeah. well, he, he's he's in many ways a revolutionary you know oh, so yeah, like yeah. A, he's like the Che Guevara of, oh, of Che Guevara che, yeah, yeah this, how, do, how do I say that you look, like, you, you look like him you should <laughs> well, know <laughs> <laughs> well he very much is that equivalent oh, yeah, of a super no, yeah, villain yeah. in this because yeah. how yeah. You, willing you have to, to willing, willing to do anything for his people even yeah. the risk of innocent and other people but yeah. as long as his people come out first yeah. Then that's what I'll well. Well, and as long as he's on top of that. exactly yeah, because yeah. because Wolverine makes that point where he's like, "You're full of shit. If, oh, yeah. if you believed in this, you'd be right in that machine oh, yourself." Yeah. You know, which I I love the nuance of that character. Mm -hmm. You know, like he he isn't really after. I mean, he's after power ultimately, mm -hmm. and yeah, power no. for him and his people that comes yes. second yeah. to him. You know, because you know you live you live in a basically, concentration camp. Yeah, basically, you know? it's like once I have power. Then yeah. I can give other people power. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. not the same amount of power. No, <laughs> no. it's not equitable anyway. No, 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 there's no equity in yeah it's like power. Stalin. Yeah, it, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's there are a lot of real life um, equivalents. You oh, know, a lot yeah, of comparisons cool. you can make, and this was obviously drawn from real life figures. The mm. the most popular for um, Professor X and Mal or, um, Professor X and Magneto are. Malcolm. Well, no, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Like yeah. those are the uh, the comparisons that are often made oh, yeah. with yeah. those two characters because of their whole ideologies of, of being a mutant mm -hmm. and uh, whether equality should be the goal or supremacy should. Be. I built this school where mutants could learn to focus their powers in a positive way and also learn that mankind was not evil, just uninformed. And yeah. um, I, I love that that's brought in. Here. You know, there's a line that's brought up uh, um, where it's like the first time we see X with uh, Magneto and they're having that discussion of like, you know, uh, people have changed is what Professor X says. People are different. They're not how they were when we met. And Magneto's just like, we're the future. It's us. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it's going to be, even if I'm not doing my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, is there a scene in this? That for you really cements the film, like it represents the film for you guys. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wait for the first film. For the or first or film. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, darn. For the first film. All right, here. Actually, no. Here, Miles, you go first. <laughs> you know what happens when you electrify a toad? <laughs> oh the God. same thing that happens <laughs> to everything else. <laughs> I think what cements the film is. Uh, oh, let me think. I mean, there's a good, a lot of good moments. I mean, everybody's being. Basically, uh, the so the scene over on the fucking Lady Liberty. Oh yeah, yeah, that fucking scene. iconic, iconic oh, yeah. scene. Wolverine uh, versus Sabretooth. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, it's just like uh, what brings it all together. It's like uh, I, I forgot who, who threw who threw a Cyclops like fucking visor to him. Or something. Oh, I I think uh, Jean did. Yeah, genius. Like, yeah, throws it at him. And <laughs> it's like, tss, and it just fucking lasers. Like, oh, this the team. This it. The team's here. Let's do it. And like, let's kick some ass. And just like, I, I wish you were Cyclops in the film. 
And your and your and your war cry, your battle cry is let's kick some let's, ass. Let's do it. Let's do it. X Men. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Brian? Uh, well, honestly, I don't know if there's directly a scene that feels like the perfect scene for this film for me, mm-hmm. but d- one scene that definitely feels super nostalgic and almost kind of like, oh, that's cool to see this on screen is honestly the beginning scene where mm-hmm. Rogue gets in the truck with Wolverine and then they get knocked out by uh, Sabretooth and yeah. they're in the snow and then we see Storm, we see Cyclops just yeah. appearing out of nowhere and then coming and using their powers. I love that scene. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Yeah. And I love the snow. I'm sure it's fake, but I just love... <laughs> I, I'm a sucker for... Hey, I know it's for fake. <laughs> I'm a sucker for scenes in the that snow. That shit was CG. <laughs> I'm a sucker for scenes in the snow. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously I think the introduction to the school, that's also Oh yeah, that was too, great. But yeah. I feel like a better introduction to the school may have been in the second film. Yeah, well, I gotta say that the opening of the film is really, I think, bold, especially for that time, to legitimize this film, these characters, with uh, opening up in Auschwitz. Mm-hmm. Like, it's seeing the origin of Magneto, something that, like, a scene that is so dark, not, not just, like, uh, you know, lighting-wise or cinematography-wise, but just the content of it, yeah. seeing him being ripped away from his family as they go into the chambers and stuff, is oh. really... Like that's got that's it's, a risk to open up a, a superhero it's, movie. It's, it's a you know? fucked up like yeah. Like, oh, yeah. This, uh, this, like they're you not. know this movie. I didn't like the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was, little, that was a little much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad uh, people stuck around. Like. Like oh, like think about bringing your kids into this. It's PG. I know, yeah. It, is, was it PG thirteen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. PG thirteen. Fucking opening of that scene with their kids. Like, that I walk in the boy in the striped yeah. pajamas. All of a well, did you guys know what the, when you were kids? Did you know what that was? Like no. when you're watching it? Oh, well, no. no. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, <laughs> no. I wish I, I for you know, you forget, you forget it. It's like oh, mutants. <laughs> Well, I'm a history major, so it's different for me. I, I yeah, knew what was going on. Bro, you were negative three when this movie came out, okay? So oh, when I saw it later when I was like around ten. When, when you were was. six, you knew what the concentration camp yeah, for? Yeah, I did. You were excited? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas Miles was always yes, a denier. It showed. <laughs> well, it, it really, it's it's not only bold, but it's also, it sticks to the themes of mm-hmm. the, the mutants, right? Like oh, to yeah. open up on Auschwitz, like really shows the parallel. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's telling you this is what these people are now. Yeah. You know? And I love that they kind of bring that up. I, it, we're not at this film yet, but they bring that op- type of opening back in Days of Future Past, kind yeah. of uh, full yeah. circle moment, yeah, which yeah, I really love. A really good scene. That yeah. was a, that was a, actually a really good that, scene. That yeah, might be yeah. my favorite scene in that whole film. That and the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was... Oh, wait, what did I say first class? No, yeah. no, you said you said Days of Future Past. Oh well, they. What's funny is they, they do it also in First Class, but yeah. they do they do something similar in Days of Future in Past day, yeah. at the very beginning. Where yes, you, yes, you see the right, camps yeah. and everything, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, no, this this movie's. I, I really enjoy the film. I'd say. I love the the, the the unity of the yeah. team. No, it's an it's enjoyable like, yeah. watch when you like understand the context a little bit more. Mm-hmm. When you get a little bit more older. I mean, as a kid, you liked either the third movie or maybe Origins. But that's a stretch. But then now, what? Well, <laughs> what? What I mean, well, as a kid, you're dumb, so you're like, "Oh, big battle, awesome," you know? Oh, so the prequels. You need to stop with that. <laughs> Don't give up on them. Mankind has evolved. Not anymore. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's. let's...